This is Colin O'Keefe here for LXPN TV. Social media is changing the way people communicate in a number of different contexts, and that includes notifications in class action lawsuits, but there are issues. Joining me now to discuss a recent lawsuit involving Gawker Media is Baker Hostetler attorney John Lewis. He is author on the firm's employment class action blog. Uh, John, first, let's discuss the suit at hand. Uh, the judge pushed back at notifying potential class members via social media in, and was said that, you know, you can't necessarily do that in certain contexts because it was, quote, overbroad. But why is that unacceptable in this setting to go out and try to solicit as many class members via social media as you can? Well, I think, uh, Colin, you have to put it in, in the context that the judge was ruling, and he had set some ground rules. The, the primary reason for these uh, initial opt-in notices is simply to put individuals on notice that there is a pending lawsuit. It's that straightforward and do it in a very candid way. I see. And then, yeah, I mean, they mentioned that this kind of also was a way to, it was almost to like blow, make, make a news of the lawsuit, right? Was that was one of the reasons that the judge was a little bit perturbed with this was because, you know, it wasn't only notification. It almost seemed like they were intentionally trying to make news of it. Well, absolutely. He indicated, uh, initially in his first order in 2014, that it was essentially supposed to mimic the normal opt-in notice. But what he got back, and because they had to do it twice, a plaintiff's counsel, but what he got back was the use of social media, Twitter, postings, uh, hashtags, things that went far beyond notice to potential plaintiffs. And that's what upset him. He felt, I think, that plaintiff's counsel understood or should have understood the ground rules, and yet they went far beyond the ground rules in a way that could be viewed as humiliating or shaming the defendants. That makes sense. And then second, you know, kind of where does this leave us? This is kind of an extreme situation with the lawsuit and with kind of the, the publicity that came as a result of it, at least the social publicity. So, you know, if social media is going to be used in class action notifications, is there a way that it can be used acceptably? Are there ground rules that could make sense for using social media in such a context? Well, in this case, I think there were some good arguments to be made. There were only 55 uh, interns. The problem was they did, no one had their phone numbers or their email addresses. So given that, and given the statistics that the judge uh, cited that like 89% of individuals in the, what, 18 to 29 age bracket, you, it made sense. And it's a very simple message. What causes some confusion, I think, is when you get beyond this relatively simple case, then the facts change. In other words, if it were under Rule 23 and it were a class action, the issues would be more complex. If it were consumer litigation, where you have a vast array of individuals, again, it would be different. There would be additional levels of complexity. For this case, I think he was concerned primarily about um, deceiving the individuals that got it, uh, misstating the the position of the parties, and perhaps the relationship of these individuals with plaintiffs' counsel. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and you mentioned there, there's only 55 individuals that are participating, potentially participating in this class action. You don't need to put out you know, broad tweets and, you know, posting on Reddit and stuff like that. This is something where I assume if you're using social media, you could probably spend one day, find the 55 individuals and send them, I assume, a private Facebook message or something of that ilk as opposed to what they tried to do. Exactly. He was concerned that the way this was being set up using Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, that people who had nothing to do with this would be given notices. The other thing is they wanted to notify all applicants. He said no. They also wanted to use the trademarks of Gawker. He said no to that. So th this case is kind of a good instructor's tool 
in what to do and what not to do and what the concerns are. And if you and you know if you have the ability to look at the various orders starting back in 2014 to present that the court put out, uh, it lets you know exactly what judges in this Fair Labor Standard Act context are going to be concerned with. Mm -hmm, absolutely. It's an interesting area to keep an eye on, for sure. Uh, once again, that was John Lewis of Baker Hostetler for his full insight on this lawsuit, and I'm sure have some context going back a ways as well on the publication. Be sure to visit employmentclassactionreport.com. Thanks for joining me today, John. Appreciate it. Thank you, Colin.